Well, praise the Lord, saints. We thank the Lord for another opportunity to come to it, come to Him that we can pray. And what a privilege have He given us that we we can pray. And we just want to thank Him tonight for that privilege of prayer. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, what a wonderful Savior you are. We thank you, Lord, that you still uh, take care of your children, even though they uh, experience many things, Lord, you still take care of them. And Lord, you, I just thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do, how you're going to undertake on every hand, how you keep your, your children and how you undertake for their every need. So, Lord, tonight as we look into your perfect law and liberty, give me wisdom and grace as we uh, look into your word that we can be encouraged and to give us confidence, Lord, to stay focused on you and on the things of the Lord. Have your way even now, Lord. Thank you for all that you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight, saints, I want to uh, uh, be speaking on something that was laid on my heart, the Lord laid on my heart, how to stay focused. How to stay focused and stable on the things of God in an unstable world. This world is so unstable, out, out of control. And Satan is look like it having an uh, uh, unditched effort to destroy many people. And we see many things happen today. You see uh, gun violence, uh, climate changes. No stableness in, in uh, politics. And nothing is stable no more. But thank God he is able. That he is stable. So tonight we want to look at that, uh, that we might find some courage in the, your word, Lord, that we can stay focused on you. And I'd like to, uh, if you have your Bible, I'd like to start off in First Peter chapter 5. Matter of fact, I probably would be there until the next two uh talking on 1 Peter chapter 5. And here in 1 Peter chapter 5, my main verse is going to be verse 10, but I'll be uh, coming down to verse 10. Here Peter is writing and, and encouraging the believer that he's speaking to how to stay stable in an unstable world. Lord, this world is so unstable. And uh, he, he encouraged them in verse 5 and 6 that he if you want to stay stable, you must put on the clothes of him or humility. You must put on the clothes of humility. If you want to, uh, to experience the strength and stability God can bestow upon his children, that we should, uh, that we should cast all our cares on you, all our anxieties, all our depressions that we can cast them upon the Lord. Then he reminds us that uh, we have an adversary, Peter says. And we know what the adversary wants to do. He wants to hinder us. He really wants to destroy us, but he wants to hinder you from even praying and getting into his word. He tries to do that. Tried to hinder you. And he wanted to, it says here, he wants to devour you or uh, destroy you. But we want to go down to verse 10 uh, at verse 10, we want to look at a few things in verse 10. And here, uh, he reminds them that they have a God of grace. In verse 10, Peter reminds them, and they come out and they say, but the God of all grace. But the God of all grace. What an encouraging word that, you know, we say a God that gracious. Matter of fact, his grace is what saved us. And, and to look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, we are saved by grace through faith. His grace saved us. And it called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Eternal glory by Christ Jesus. And then it went on to say in the verse, after that you have suffered a while. Now, <laughs> nobody wants to suffer. We understand that. But the uh, you, you can uh, be assured that once you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you can cast it off because you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer somewhere or another. It might be physical or spiritual, uh, whatever it might be, we're going to suffer. Paul 
Paul said that in uh, uh, he made that statement that in Second Corinthians four seventeen. He just called it light affliction. But sometimes we see it as more than light affliction. Uh, he said, but uh, 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 let's look at it a minute. Second Corinthians four seventeen. Paul called him, he said, that, that's light affliction. And Paul, you know, went through some suffering. And, but it tells us it isn't just light, uh, light affliction in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. So we're going to suffer. Verse 17 said, for our light affliction. You see that? He calls them light affliction. <laughs> but we might say, Lord, Lord I'm, going through something. I'm going through something here and, and, and it's not light. But Paul said it's just light afflictions, which is but for a moment, for a moment. And here Peter said it's just for a while, it's just for a while, just for a moment. And Paul said it's just for a moment. And they're working for us a far more exceeding in the term way of glory, suffering. Yes, we, we, if you're a child of God, you can, you can uh, be assured that you're going to suffer. Why? Our Savior suffered, did he not? Are we any better than our Savior? No, he suffered. And the, and the scripture, uh, I think it uh, said, that them that live godless shall suffer persecution. Them that live godless shall suffer persecution. So our suffering is just going to be for a while here, and, and we go back to 1 Peter chapter 5. It said, uh, had a eternal weight who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while. Then he gives us some encouragement, say. And he said, what it does is uh, makes you perfect. It makes you perfect. And we're not talking about being perfect on this earth because we know we're not going to be perfect here because uh, we're we in this, in this uh body are clear, we're not going to be perfect. But the perfect, he's talking about it like a doctor, you know, setting the bone. He putting things back together. And God will uh, mend our broken lives when we're going through this suffering. He will mend our broken lives and make us whole. This is what this word is talking about. Make us whole. He's the God of all grace. All grace and able to repair Pray God he able to repair and restore those errors in our lives that are not stable. What a blessing. What a blessing. You know, we we look at this world situation today, it can bring depression. It can bring anxiety on you as we look at things happening all over the world. Mass killing, gun violence, and even uh, uh, I was looking at uh, Buffalo has seven feet of snow. If that doesn't impress you, how you can get by that one? Seven feet of snow, some unusual. But God can restore and repair those areas of, uh, in our life that are not stable. You know, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 21, Jesus was speaking to his disciples. I'm going to turn to that. And he saw uh, Peter and John, I believe, was. Let me turn to that in Matthew chapter 4, 21. Matthew chapter 4, verse 21. Oh, we have a mighty Savior. I'm going to tell you, even though we suffer, even though we see things in this world that can depress us and cause anxiety, we still can look to Jesus because he's the God. He's the God of all grace. In Matthew 4, 21, uh, uh, this verse is that uh, Jesus is said that going from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their net, and he called them. And sometimes, you know, uh, we have to mend that, that our net, that spiritual net that we go through, because they were mending their net because they were fishermen. And you know, if you got a net with holes in it, you're not gonna catch, <laughs> you're not gonna catch too many fish. But sometimes, you know, we, we have to have our spiritual lives, our spiritual net mended. The Lord uh, uh, is again in this area that it, it needs mending. 
but we can look to the Lord who have grace to restore. He's a great repair who can make us whole again. That's the word talking about being perfect. Peter's saying, make you perfect. Can we mend those areas or restore or repair those areas in our life that are not stable, that are not, that we can't focus upon? And what a blessing that is. But not only that, then he goes on down in verse 10 and said, after you have suffered a while, it make you perfect, but then establish you. Establish you. It establish you. Not, uh, he makes us perfect. Not only does it make us perfect and whole, but his grace makes us establish us. It calls us to be fixed firmly. And uh, it keeps us steady in an unstable world and makes us stable in spite of the inability we, we feel living in a world that is so unstable. We must remember our Savior, the God of grace, and he gives us grace to help in any situation. James said he put grace on top of grace. Grace on top of grace. That's what James uh, 4 and 6 says. That he uh he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said that God resisted the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. And Peter said we must put on that clothes of humbleness. We must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he may, he will exalt you in due time. Then focus. Sometimes it's difficult to be to stay focused in a world that is falling apart, in a world that is so unstable. Sometimes we can be depressed when we look at things. That's why we need to ask the Lord, the Lord help me to stay focused on your word. Help me to stay focused on a thing to do. Because we look at this world, we definitely will be depressed. But then we, it say, uh, and he give us grace to help in any situation according to Hebrews 4.16. Let's look at that. Hebrews 4.16. And Hebrews 4.16 says, let us therefore come boldly. That's why I say that prayer is a great privilege. We can come boldly to the Lord. We can come with confidence. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. <coughs> that we may have found mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And prayer is our reports to God. We must pray. We can come into the throne room and say, Lord, I need to stay focused. <clears throat> help me to stay focused. Help me to stay stable on, on your will and on your word and the things of need. Stability. Are you focused? We can be focused. Because Peter said the God of all grace, he's the one that can repair. He's the one that can make us perfect and whole uh, again. He can fix those areas that uh, need mending. Those areas of our spiritual lives that might have some uh, problems, he can mend those areas. So he's a great, great repair. So let us therefore come boldly in Hebrew that says, that we may have the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. And we looked at that in James 4, 6. Say he gives us more grace. He piled grace on top of grace. What a savior, amen? What a savior. We need his grace. We need his mercy. We need to stay focused at, 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 at any time that we need. Now the time, saints, that we should be on our knees and say, Lord, help me. To stay focused. Help me to be stable in an unstable world. Help me to be a, a, a messenger for you. Help me to be a witness for those that are lost. Lord, that they might receive the gospel, that they might be saved. And then we can thank us. So Lord, you know, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace and for your mercy. 
that you are able to repair those areas in our lives that are need repairing and mending. So I'm going to stop here. I don't want to go too far on this. I want to stop here, but next time we'll still be in, in uh, First Peter chapter 5 that can give us some words of encouragement. Because this world, as we look at this world situation today, we say, we, uh, we say, Lord, help us. Help your people, Lord, to stay focused. Help us to stay stable in the things of thee and in your word. Help us to pray, Lord. Help us to come to the throne of great boldly that we may find help and mercy in the time of need. We need you, Lord. And we need to stay stable in an unstable world that we can continue to do those things to bring glory to your name. That continue to be a bold witness for you, even though the adversary wants to hinder us. He wants to throw roadblocks in our way and keep us off our knees. And what a time it is now that the saints need to be on their knees. So Lord, we need, a, we need you. This world needs you, Lord. And you're the only one that's able to make this world great. Because you are the God of all grace. So we're going to stop here and say, let me give a quick, uh, give a quick, uh, Peter is really talking to uh, 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 believers here. But if you are unsaved, you're in a turmoil, and you, uh, uh, the pandemic and the and the uh, recession and all those things are coming against you. And you maybe you feel depressed. I know some people are very depressed, especially at this time of year when they don't have the funds and the things that they get for them. But the Lord is the God of all grace. He's still waiting to save you. If you're lost, He still has His hands out. And said, come to me. Let me give you grace. Let me give you that saving grace. That grace that you can be born again into the family of God. He's still looking to save those that are lost. That's why he came. He came to uh, seek and to save the lost. What a savior. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And all he wants you to do is to born you into his family, that he can make you f stay focused and stable on the things of thee. In spite of the situation the world is in today, we have a God of all grace, a God of all grace, who, who can call us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. If you can accept him now, he willing to set you free. Won't you come and say, Lord, I'm in a I'm in a, uh, a very sad situation. Can you save me? And he will. He'll save you for his glory. And he asks you to come. All you have to do is come and say, Lord, I need to be saved. I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you were buried and believe that you rose again the third day. Come into my heart and life and set me free from the shackles and sin upon this world. Just have your way in Jesus' name. All you have to do is ask him, and he'll do it because he's the God of all grace. So we're going to stop there, saints, and next time I'll be picking up on verse 10. I'll still be looking at verse 10 where Peter gave us some encouraging words how we can stay focused and stable in an unstable world. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Lord, where would we be without you? And Lord, we, we thank you that you are the God of all grace. Lord, you still keep your children in spite of what all they go through, in spite of all the anxiety and the depression as we look at this world. You're still able to set us free from those things because you're the God of all grace. You give us more grace and we thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for the saints, Lord. Help us, Lord, we need you. Thank you that we can bind together as one, Lord, and come to the throne of grace and pray and find mercy and help in the time of need. And what a need it is today, Lord, that we look to thee. Thank you for all things, Lord. We love you and we praise you. And we bless your holy name. Thank you how you're able to put things back together. How you're able to mend those areas, Lord, that are broken. You're able to restore and repair those areas because you're the great repair. You're the great restorer. You're the God of all mercy. And we give you the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. of the Lord. I've been Over. Uh -huh. 